all know that the earth is spherical in shape and the globe is a mini representation of the earth the globe helps us to take a look at the entire earth at once all the countries the major water bodies the continents and everything however if we wish to study a particular part of the earth or if we wish to draw the entire earth on a flat surface then it is not a globe anymore it then can be called as a map so for example where a globe gives us a view of the entire earth as i mentioned all the countries the major water bodies the continents a map does both the things it helps us to take a look at the entire earth at once and also a part of it for example here we have a world map in the top where we can see all the continents the major water bodies and the countries too we have marked india in the world map however if we only wish to study india alone then we also have maps for that so map serves the purpose of both the things it helps us to read and take a look at a particular area of the earth or the entire earth at once so maps that have been used since prehistoric times that is the early explorers also used maps in their voyages to locate places or to explore new places so these maps have been playing an important role since those times and are still very important not only in the field of geography but also many other social sciences so how exactly can we define maps well maps are a drawing of the earth's surface either whole or a part of it on a flat surface so as i mentioned either we can have the entire earth's view on a flat surface the drawing of the entire earth on a flat surface even that serves the purpose of a map however if we only wish to study a particular part of the earth for example here the country of china that is a part of asia is what is a study of concern so for that we do not need to take the entire world map but we'll only take the map of china and do our necessary study so maps are a representation of the earth's surface either whole or a part of it on a flat surface now what do you think all these maps have the same measurement or are drawn to the same scale no before we answer that question we need to understand what exactly are scales and how they are important with regard to maps now as i mentioned maps helps us to study a particular part of the earth or the entire earth now say for example we want to study the country of india and we want to study the different physical features that are present in the country of india now for that what do we need we cannot map that huge indian subcontinent on a piece of paper and then study it neither can we go around the entire country and continue with a study so for that what we do is we take a particular scale now what exactly is a scale so a scale is often represented as a ratio what is the ratio about the ratio is between the real world and the size in units on the map what do we mean by that well say for example i want to study a particular area which has a length of 10 kilometers now can i put the entire 10 kilometers area on the map no for that what do i do so i decide to take the 10 kilometer on the ground as 10 cm on the map so for me 10 kilometers on the real ground will be equal to 10 cm on the map so now it becomes very easy for me to study that particular area this is what the scale does a scale makes the study of the real ground easier because with the help of units we can map that real area on the maps and then carry on with our study now scales are of three types and each serve their own purpose so the three types of scales that we use while studying or drawing maps are first is a statement scale now statement scale is also known as verbal scale now here we have a scale saying 
one inch to one mile. Now, what does that mean? Well, the statement simply means that one inch on the map will be equal to one mile on the actual ground. So, if we are studying or if we are mapping a particular area on the map, which is one inch in measurement, it only means that we are studying one mile on the actual ground. This is what is a statement scale or a verbal scale. So, before we move on with the lesson, could you help me answer this simple question? Statement scale is also known as meter scale, graphical scale or verbal scale. Well, the correct answer is it is also known as the verbal scale. Now, the second type of scale is graphical scale. Now, graphical scale also serves the same purpose, but here we don't have the scale in a statement form. We have it in the form of a graphical representation. So, the scale here is a graphical representation of what we are measuring or studying. Here it says that 1 inch is equal to 1.576 miles. This means that 1 inch on the map will be equal to 1.576 miles on the real ground. Finally, the third type of scale that we use, particularly in topographical maps, are representative fraction. Now, what exactly is a representative fraction? Well, it is the distance on the map to the distance on the real ground. So, the distance on the map to the distance on the real ground. Now, representative fraction or the RF value usually is represented as a ratio. That is, here we have a ratio of 1 is to 1 lakh. Now, what does this ratio tell us? What is the measurement of the real ground or of the map? For that, we need to do a simple math. Now, take for example, I want to study an area of 10 kilometers square, which has a length of 10 kilometers. Now, how do I do that? Well, I will take 10 kilometers on the ground as 10 centimeters on my map. Now, if 10 centimeters on the map is equal to 10 kilometers on the ground, it means that 1 centimeter on the map will be equal to 1 kilometer on the ground. Now, we know that 1 kilometer is equals to 1 lakh centimeters, right? Which only means that 1 centimeter on the map is equal to 1 lakh centimeter on the real ground. So, that is where the ratio is created. So, the ratio now stands at 1 is to 1 lakh, which means that every 1 centimeter on the map will be equal to 1 lakh centimeter on the real ground. This is what is known as the representative fraction or the RF value. So, these are the three types of scales that we usually use in a topographical map or any other map. Now, maps again can be divided or categorized under two broad headings. They can either be a small scale map or a large scale map. Now, if you want to study the political division of India, right? So, you need to see all the union territories and the states of India. For that, we need to take a look at a map of India which shows us all the states and union territories, right? So, here we are studying a large geographical area but with less details. Why less details? Because we don't have the details of each state here. We only have the geographical division or the physical division of each state and we have minimum information of all these states. However, if I wish to study a particular state in detail, I want to know the different transport system of the state or the different types of physical features that are present in that particular state, then I need to take a look at a large scale map. Now, what is a large scale map? A large scale map is one in which we study a small area but with greater details. Right? So, these are the two types of maps, small scale map and large scale map. Well, a small scale map is studying a large area with small details and a large scale map is studying a small area with more details. So, these are the two types of maps. 
so in this lesson we were able to understand the significance of maps we understood how maps can be used to study a particular area on the earth it also helps us to study the entire earth at once or a part of it and we further learned that while drawing a map or while studying a map we need to take the help of scales scales are of three types and each has its own purpose we finally learned that maps can be broadly categorized as small scale or large scale map in our next lesson we'll try to understand the importance of topographical maps and the different features of a topographical map Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now